In the opening title sequence of Catch Me If You Can, the designers Olivier Kunzel and Florence Degger make use of a combination of modern and retro styles. The movie itself, directed by Steven Spielberg, revolves around a young con artist, Frank Abagnale Jr., played by Leonardo DiCaprio, and his pursuit by an FBI agent, Carl Hanratty, played by Tom Hanks. The film is set in a world of 1960s jet-setting prosperity, and the title sequence is a lively animation of stylized, hand-cut and stamped silhouette figures chasing one another through geometrically stylized block-coloured scenery, setting up a tone of playfulness and a sense that is simultaneously retro and contemporary. The silhouettes of the two main characters move fluidly across the two-dimensional screen and recreate the idea of an extended chase sequence, which is the centre of the film's narrative. The typefaces used in the title sequence are Culvetica and Archive Antique Extended, and there's a clear contrast between these two typefaces. While Culvetica belongs to the family of Sans Serif, the Archive Antique Extended is a wide slab serif. The contrast between these two typefaces is effectively utilised to perform different functions in the title sequence. The words directed by and other job titles are presented in the font of Archive Antique Extended, and Steven Spielberg and other names are in Culvetica. The contrast between the serif and sans serif fonts helps the viewer group the information into two individual entities so that viewer comprehension can be achieved immediately. Uh, this is an example of the law of similarity which we covered in Gestalt theory. The law of similarity dictates that the mind groups similar elements together and in this case the two different types of fonts are used to present two different kinds of information and characters belonging to the same kind of information appear in the same font. In the starting frames, during the emergence of the film title Catch Me If You Can, a black bar rises from the ground, then grows into the vertical stroke of the letter F before other letters emerge. The relentless and fedora-wearing FBI agent silhouetted in black is blocked away from the young con artist who just fled the scene moments ago. A geometric figure of an airplane flies across the screen, passing the word me in a white font. Then the word distorts and blurs into the background, mimicking the effect of real clouds as disturbed by an airplane. Once again, the elusive con artist who impersonates a pilot at one time vanishes into thin air. Actress and actors' names are interwoven with parallel vertical lines. The vertical strokes of the letters become a part of elevator cables. The animation is mainly the downward motion of the letters relative to the elevator figure, producing an impression of the retracting cables and the rising car. The simple composition of the typeface matches up naturally to the other elements on the screen, which are made up of simple geometric shapes. The elevator is merely a greenish rectangular box, for example. When the three pendant lights on the left side of the screen are turned on one by one, the co-executive producer's name, Daniel Lupi, glows, acting as the electric filament inside a huge incandescent light bulb. Again, the sans serif feature makes it plausible to extend the vertical strokes of the letters I and L as if they are the support wires of the filament of the light. The type interacts with the animation as part of this sustained and symbiotic connection between all elements of image, type and music. Spot colours in scenes shift and change, indicating temporal and geographical shifts. The silhouettes of the trickster character of Frank Abagnale Jr. are hand-cut by the designers, echoing the hand-cut and hand-forged documents and stamps that are created by Abagnale in the film. The combination of visual imagery with a Henry Mancini-like score by John Williams echoes 1960s title sequences, such as The Pink Panther, and the spot colours and silhouettes of Saul Bass title sequences, such as for uh, Anatomy of a Murder. Accordingly, there are elements in this sequence that resemble Bass's early works as well, and this was by no means the first use of a retro title sequence referencing its relation to earlier works. However, Catch Me If You Can is an important development that shows the growing self-awareness in the field of title design, and it offers some well-known reference points that invoke the sprightly crime films that are so characteristic of that era and sets the tone perfectly for the tale that follows in the movie itself. It not only prepares the audience for the main narrative, it provides an almost entirely separate work that extends on the film and enriches the subsequent cinematic experience.